Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to add a second form to your Qt project and also how to communicate between the two forms. So we can send data from the main window to our second window and then also we can get data back from the second window to our main window. So this is a pretty common thing we need to do in our applications. So I think this will be a helpful video. So without any further ado, let's get started. So to get an idea about what I'm talking, this is how it works. So we have this main window and as you can see, we have this text label. And also if I open this dialog.ui file, you will see that uh, the text in this label is called text label. But when I open the dialog, it is changed to hello. And this is still text label. But then if I click OK, the dialog is closed. And then we have this meow text in the main window. So basically when we are opening the dialog, we are changing the text inside the dialog to be hello. And after that, when the second window is closed, we are sending back a signal to change the text in the main window to meow. So actually this is pretty easy to do and let me show you how. So I'm not going to do everything from scratch. I will just show you what my project looks like right now. So I have a basic project, but also I have this dialog.ui, dialog.cpp and dialog.h files. So to add those, all I have to do is pick some folder and add new. And from here, select Qt, Qt design form class, not the design form. We need designer form class. Then we can uh, choose a template. So I will just go with dialog without buttons and then we can click next and then we can give a name for our class. Since I already have a dialog class in my project, I will just name this as dialog2. And then we can click next and finish. So this will create a UI file and also the CBP and H files including the class. So if I go to the edit section, you will see that we have dialog2.ui, dialog2.cpp, dialog2.h. And I will just delete these three because I can show you what you need to do using the files I already created. So if I go to dialog.ui, I have a very simple layout. I have this text label just a label from this toolbox and then we have a button. And if I go to main window.ui, I have the same thing here. We have a text label and then the button called open dialog. First, I will go to the dialog.ui and then I will go to the OK buttons slot of clicked. And in here, I will just type close. So this will just close the second form and nothing else, okay? And now here, we also need to edit the constructor a little bit. So in your case, you won't have this in the arguments of your constructor, which is a Q string message. So you will have something like this. So all you have to do is type a comma and Q string message. So this is the message that we will be passing to our second form from the main window. So I will show it later. So now, after doing that, we can type this. So we have UI label set text message. So what we are doing essentially is just grabbing the message from the arguments and then passing it as the text for our label, which is this one. Okay. So that's actually pretty straightforward. And I will explain this one later. Now, if I go to the main window.cpp file, and also, and also by the way, you need to go to dialog.h and modify the constructor here as well. I have just given a default value, and then we have qString message default. Okay, so the same thing here, qString message. And then if I go to main window.ui, I will click on this open dialog button and go to slot, click, and here we have some code. So first we need to include the dialog.h because if we are going to use the dialog class, we need to include the h file. And then after that, we can create a new object on the heap using the new keyword and it will be a pointer. We need to create it like this, otherwise it will just close. If I write something like dialog uh, dlg and then dlg.show, it will just close, okay? So we need to pass something here. So I'm just doing this to show you. So for now, let's just do this. 
and I will just commit these like that. And now if I run the application, okay, and if I click on the open dialog button, as you can see, the dialog just closes right after it opened. So the fix is actually to create it on the heap. Remove these two. And now after that, you can use the arrow operation uh, to show the dialog. So my dialog show, okay. So you create the dialog uh, object like this, and then you can use it to show any instance of that class. Now, you don't need this one right now. So all we have to do is show, but you have to notice this part. So this is basically calling the constructor of the dialog class. So when calling the constructor, we need two arguments. So if we go to dialog.cp, dialog.cpp, you will see that we need a Q widget parent and also Q string message. So the parent is the parent window, which is launching this uh, new window and the message is what we are going to pass. So the first one is this. So it will just pass a pointer to the main window. And then we have the message we want to send. So if I type something like, um, hey there, it should be in the uh, dialog when we open it because this will be passed into this constructor. And from here, the message is passed as the set, uh, as the text of the label using the set text method. Now, if we run this program, we should see hey there when we click on the button. So as you can see, we have hey there. And if I click OK, the form closes. And now, now comes the um, awesome part. So if you can remember, event handlers in Qt are not called event handlers and events are not called events. They are called the signals and slots. So signals are like events and the slots are like the event handlers. So if I go to slot, that means and I'm going to the event handler. And if I go again, and you will see select signals. So these are the signals. So they are like events. So what we're going to do is, so we are going to create a signal. So if I go to dialog.h, uh, we can put the signals under the public part. And here we can just type signal, colon, and then the signal. So this can be uh, anything. We don't need to call it data available. So we can give it, this is basically a function actually. Uh, so this is just basically a function actually, but the only thing is uh, it doesn't have a body. The body is somewhere else, which is the slot. So this is just the signal. So we have void data available and then we can specify a parameter. So we just have to define the signal right here in the dialog.h file. And then if we go to dialog.cpp, you will see that we have this line, okay? So what we will do here is we will connect a specific signal to our new signal, okay? So this will connect the finished signal of our dialog class. So what does this mean is uh, this is a signal that is emitted when everything is finished in our form. So basically when the form is closed and this is our signal, okay? So this is just connecting the finished signal with this one, okay? So the first argument is this, which is the dialog window. So what you put here is actually which window is emitting the finished signal or the signal we specify right here. And the second argument is which signal is going to be emitted or which signal do we want to respond, okay? And then the third one is where do you want to receive this signal? So it is also going to be this because we are going to receive the finished signal from this window, okay? It might be complicated, but it is really simple. So these two arguments are completely different. So this one is the sender, the sender, which is emitting the signal. And this one is the receiver who is uh, getting the signal. Okay. That, so if we put this, the current dialog window, we receive this signal and then it will decide what to do with that signal. So in this case, we will decide what to do with that signal. So that's what we put right here. So this is actually a lambda function. So the fourth argument is the slot that is receiving the signal or basically the event handler for this event. So when this event happens, 
this is what should happen so this is the event handler we can just pass a function here function name here or we can just write a lambda function like this so this lambda function captures the this pointer by value and then emits the data available signal with the string meow and this emit keyword can be used to emit a new signal okay so basically what we are doing is we are saying to emit a new signal when this signal is received by this form so it's actually very very simple so what we are doing is we are seeing if the dialog is emitting this the finished signal and if that signal is emitted we also want to emit a new signal called data available which we can access later in a different slot and we can handle it later so we don't have any arguments that's why we have empty parentheses for this function because remember this is just a function and then in the function body we have the emit data available meow okay so data available is this one right here this signal we defined earlier okay it takes a q string data and that's what this is so we have passed meow now we have emitted a signal when the dialog is finished now we can use that signal and we can write a slot for that signal or we can use that event and we can write an event handler for that event so that event handler should be in main window.cpp because remember this is emitting some data that we need to capture by the main window to update the text in the main window so let's go to main window.cpp and here we have connected again we have used the connect function again to connect the signal okay this signal which is right here data available signal okay data available signal with this slot which is right here okay so it's actually very very simple the, the mechanism is really simple it's actually very awesome and cute otherwise in something like bean forms it is a little bit complicated than this it's actually pretty simple in cute we have to write connect because we are going to connect a signal and a slot and where is the sender who is sending the signal that is going to be my dialogue because remember uh, my dialogue is going to emit this signal right here data available in here we are going to emit who is emitting the dialogue so in this case it is going to be my dialogue so my dialogue is emitting that signal and what is that signal dialogue data available so this is the signal that it is going to emit and who is going to receive that signal it is going to be this main window and after that who will handle that event or what is the slot where should this signal go what should the response to this signal be so that is this one right here so we are just passing the memory address of the on data available function we have right here or rather method so we are just passing the memory address where the signal will be handled so when this or this main window receives the data available signal from the my dialog it will call this function and when that function is called we can just write this okay so when this is called it will actually get the data from here because data available uh, signal has some data as parameters and that will be injected right here in the on data available function and we can use that data to update our label so that's what's happening right here so at first it might be complicated but if you really really think it out it's actually pretty straightforward and simple and you can use this method to create any sort of signals and slots you want not just when the uh, when you want to exchange data between forms you can use this connect function to connect a signal with a slot and this is how we actually create event handlers in Qt at the runtime so let's say you wanted to create a button at runtime okay so not while you are designing the form but let's say when the user clicks um, something like a plus button you want to create 
a new button somewhere on the form and you can write the code for it and after that you can use the connect function to connect that button's click event with a specified slot or an event handle so this is actually very powerful and it's actually very easy in my opinion so i think you learned something in this video and in this video i didn't want to write codes letter by letter i just wanted to show you how to do this and let you do the coding part because i don't want to waste your time number one and then number two there is really no point in typing this out or just showing you after i type it okay so it's actually faster than me typing these whole lines and it's actually very accurate true so i will not have any mistakes so that's it for this video and i will teach you something new in the next video as well so you can subscribe to the channel and get ready for that video if you like this format you can hit the like button and definitely comment your ideas in the comment section and i will see you in the next one bye for now